guys? Learning with Rich here. In this video, we are going to learn uh, the Rules tab and Select tab in Navisworks Manage 2022 Clash Detective. Alright, so let's do this. So, I'm going to open the project that we will be working on. So, I'm going to use the sample project construction.nwf. And let's uh, open now the Clash Detective. So just click this one. So the shortcut is also Control F2 for that one. So you click that one. And then you will notice here, I cannot select the rules here because we haven't specified yet a new Clash test. So that's why it says here there are currently no Clash tests defined okay so what i'm gonna do is you can click the drop down arrow here and then you can select add test or you can just simply select that icon there so you can select that one and then after that there's now your first test so you can now put here the name of your clash so let's say for example i'm gonna put here my uh, structure versus my MEP or whatever name that you want and then enter okay so you will now notice here that our tabs here rules select results report are now enabled okay so the first tab that we have here is the rules tab okay so as you can see here on our rules tab so it says here ignore clashes between these items so the rule tabs enables you to define and customize ignore rules to be apl applied to clash tests. So it lists all currently available rules. Okay, so this can be used to make the clash detective ignore certain model geometry during a clash test. So each of the default rules can be edited and new rules may be added as uh, necessary. Okay. So a summary of the currently selected clash test is displayed at the top tab, okay? So once we do the clash detection test, okay? So that's our uh, rule. So it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. So it says here you can ignore the clashes between items in same layer, items in same group, block, or cell, or items in same file, or items with coincident snap points. Okay, so you can ignore that. So let's say you can check the first one. Okay, so right off the bat, so you will notice that there's now a exclamation point here that appear. Okay, so because there has been a changes on the rules here on our clash test. Okay, so it's just a notification. So don't worry about that. And then aside from that, we also have here the select tab. Okay, so let's explore the select tab. So if you go to the select tab, so the select tab, it's basically enables you to define your clash test. So this is very important tab. By only testing sets of items at a time. So rather than the whole model against itself. So you can use this select tab to configure the parameters for the clash currently selected on the test panel. Okay, so now the first thing that you will notice here is our selection A and B pane. So that's selection A and selection B. So this is going to be like uh, your selection A versus selection B, right? So you will notice here you also have some selection here. So it says standard, compact, properties, and if you have selection set or search sets, so you will be able to select it from here, from this drop-down. So it's just so happened that there is no selection set or search set in this project. But if you do have, you will be able to select it from that drop-down. Okay, so basically standard here, it displays the default tree hierarchy, including all the instancing, right? So this is the default tree hierarchy. And then if you expand that, so you can now see here, all the instancing of this hierarchy right so that's for your standard so if you click the drop down and then select the compact so it is actually a simplified version of the tree hierarchy 
So if you click, let's say, the MEP here, as you can see, you cannot expand that anymore. So it's very simplified compared to your standard here, which you can actually expand those uh, hierarchy, right? To make it more specific when you select elements that you want to check the clash with selection B. Okay, so that's your standard compact. And then you also have the properties. So the properties, it shows here the hierarchy based on the items properties. So you will see here all the properties of the items in your uh, project. And then the last one, the sets, if you have a sets here, it shows the same items on the sets window. So you remember we have a topic for that, right? So this one, if you have a sets, you can go to the manage set and then you will be able to see your sets here if you have. But in this project, we don't have. So you can check that video that we have done uh, earlier in this uh, lesson. Okay, so basically clash testing can be faster, more effective, and easily repeatable if you use selection and search set. So again, it just so happened we don't have a search set here and selection set. So carefully consider what sets of object need clashing against each other and create selection search sets accordingly. Okay, and then aside from our uh, selection here, drop down selection, we also have some buttons here. So these buttons here, so these are the geometry type buttons. Okay, so this clash test can include the clashing of surfaces, lines, points of the selected items. So the first one here by default, the surfaces, so it clashes between surfaces. So this is the default option. So that is already selected. So clashes item surfaces. The other one here is clashes items with center lines, like for example, the center lines of your pipes. Right, so you can also enable that if you want. And then the other one here, all you have to do is to click that to toggle on and then click again to toggle off. Okay, the other one here is uh, clashes points. Okay, so it includes point uh, geometry in clash test, like the laser points. And then aside from this three geometry type buttons, the surface, lines and points so you also have here the self intersect button so you can click this if you want to test the geometry selection in the pane against itself in addition to testing it against a geometry selection in the other pane here okay so that is your self intersect button and then the other one is use the current selection. So you can select geometry for clash testing directly in the scene view and in the selection tree dockable window. Remember your selection tree is this one, right? So you can select from your selection tree and then you can use this button here, use current selection, right? So when you have selected the required items, Using like, for example, you just need to click the object and then you can hold control to select multiple objects. So you can now then select this one. Click the use current selection button for you to be able to use those selected elements. And then the last button here, so we have the select in scene button. So you can click the select in scene button to set the focus on the scene view and in the selection tree dockable window to be the same as the current selection in the selection pane on the select tab. Okay, but I seldom use this option. Okay, right. And then you also have here uh, settings. So what are the settings that we have here? So the first one here is type. Okay, so you can select the clash type. So there are actually how many? So we have here four possible types of clashes. The first one is hard. So two objects actually intersect. So by default, this is the one that I'm using. So hard option or hard clash type. So two objects actually intersect. Okay, the other one here is conservative. So two objects are treated as intersecting even though the geometry triangles do not intersect, 
Okay, so that's your hard conservative. And then you also have here the clearance. Okay, so this clearance clash type. So two objects are treated as intersecting when they come within a specified distance of each other or clearance. So selecting this clash type also detects any hard clashes. So you might uh, use this clash type when pipes need to have space for insulation around them, for example. Right? So you can use the clearance clash type. And then the other one here is duplicate. So to in, uh, this one, to intersect two objects must be identical both in type and position. So this type of clash testing may be used to clash the entire model against itself. So this enables you to detect any items in the scene that, you know, uh, that may have been duplicated by mistake. Right? So that's our uh, setting here, the clash type, the type here clash type and then we also have here link so it enables you to link a clash test to timeliner schedule or an object animation scene right so you can use that one okay the other one here is what's this a step okay so it enables you to control the interval size to use when looking for clashes in a simulation sequence so this option is only available when you have made a selection in the uh, link drop down here. Okay, so as you can see, it's disabled. But if you're going to select like the timeliner here, you can specify the step there so that it will enable you to control the interval size to use when looking for clashes in a simulation sequence. But then again, I seldom use this one. Okay, and then what else? So we also have here tolerance. So you can specify the tolerance. So basically, it controls the severity of the clashes reported and the ability to filter out negligible clashes, which, you know, uh, which can be assumed to be worked around on site, right? So the tolerance quantity entered is uh, automatically converted to the display units of your on the settings of your Navis works manage like for example if the display units are meters and you type six inch this will automatically convert it to 0 0.15 meters okay so that's uh, how it works and then the last button here at the settings or the last option is the composite object classing uh, clashing so so basically, you can check this box to include clash results that may be found in the same composite object or a pair of objects. So when you say composite object, it is a group of geometry that is uh, considered a single object in the selection tree. So like, for example, a window object might be composed of a frame, pane, or a cavity wall may be made for several layers, right? So something like that. Okay, so I just checked that by default. And then, of course, the last one here is runs, uh, run test. So it will run the selected clash test. Okay, so let's try. So I'm going to just use here the standard. Okay, so I'm just going to use here. So on my selection A, I'll just use the structure. So like what I've said, I want structure versus MEP, and then I'll just select MEP here, the other side. So I will just use the default settings here, hard type, tolerance, 0 0.001 meter, and then uh, surfaces. Okay, right? So basically, this is your rules tab, and then this is your select tab. And then after that, you can now run the test. So you click that, and there you go. So there's now your clashes, okay? And then automatically, it will open up your results tab, okay? So that's how it works. So hopefully, you learn something uh, in this video. So we are going to discuss more about the Clash Detective tool. So we are going to uh, discuss about next video, the results and report. So for now, at least you know already the basic things about the rules and then the select tab. Okay?
So there you go. Thank you for watching, guys. Have a nice day.